Hello, I'm Lisa Joy Sigorski of the National Science Foundation. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Art Wolf. Dr. Wolf is a professor in the Department of Physics and at the Center for Astrophysics and Space Sciences at the University of California, San Diego. He joins us today from UCSD. In the October 2nd issue of the journal Nature, Dr. Wolf and a team of astronomers reported that a magnetic field in a distant galaxy produced something surprising. Hmm, an October surprise. What was this all about, Dr. Wolf? First, let me say it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, what this was about was that we, for the first time, detected a magnetic field in a very distant galaxy. Uh, the reason we're interested in this is that magnetic fields are detected everywhere in the universe. They exist in stars, in the sun, in the planets, and they also exist in the medium between the stars, the interstellar medium. And what I'm showing here is an image of a galaxy. This is a nearby galaxy where dark is light. It's a negative image, so those dark smudges are stars. And superimposed on this image are these little contours, these little lines, and they trace out the magnetic field. So this magnetic field is the interstellar magnetic field that exists uh, between the stars in this galaxy and in the Milky Way. Uh, the magnetic fields are important for a number of reasons. They mediate or determine the dynamics, the motions of interstellar clouds. But most important of all, they uh, have a very strong influence on star formation as the magnetic fields exert pressure. And the way stars form is an interstellar cloud collapses under its own weight as it gets smaller and smaller, ultimately uh, becomes a star. If a magnetic field is embedded in that gas and the pressure is very high because the magnetic field is high, that cloud won't collapse because the pressure will resist that collapse. The way we detected this magnetic field was to use this telescope. This is the uh, Green Bank 100 meter telescope, which by the way is funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, and this telescope we use this telescope to observe a very distant galaxy. Okay, and the way we detected this galaxy is shown over here. This is, uh, say, this is just a, an image of what that galaxy may look like. You see, it looks like a Milky Way galaxy like our own. And behind it is this distant quasar over here. And the light from the quasar, you can see, just goes through the galaxy all the way on its way to the telescope. The galaxy leaves an imprint on the radiation as it's on its way to us. And it's this imprint that we measured. And from that, we determine the strength of the magnetic field. This must be why you're called an astroarchaeologist. Tell me more about this provocative title. What we do is we look back in time. And when we look at distant objects, we look back in time. Because uh, this diagram over here, as I said, the speed of light is... Uh, it's a finite speed, okay, it's uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. So if we look at an object very, very far away, we see it as it was a long time ago. And this particular object, it took light 6.5 billion years to reach the Earth, okay. So that means when we look at it, we're studying uh, the universe as it was, not as it is. We study the universe as it was during its early phases. So. By doing this experiment, we are practicing astroarchaeology. We're basically uh, tracing out the past history of galaxies, and in this case, the past history of magnetic field. Dr. Wolf, what's next for you in your exploration? How will future discoveries impact current theories of star formation? Will they stand their ground, so to speak? Well, uh, most of the models for star formation and for the formation of galaxies, in particular formation of galaxies, ignore magnetic fields. They're very difficult to compute. It's a whole another uh, more sophisticated level of complexity. But I think if our observation uh, turns out to be, well, we think it's correct, but if the field we detect uh, turns out to be uh, seen in other galaxies, if other distant galaxies in the past also have strong magnetic fields. If this is a very general effect, then I think we have to go back to the drawing boards and really include magnetic fields in these models. Because as I said, 
Uh, right now, magnetic fields are ignored. So most models for galaxy formation have tons of star formation, lots of star formation. And if we're correct, that has to be uh, revised. And your next trip to the Green Bank Telescope, when will that be, and what do you hope to see? So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to go back and redo this experiment just as a cautionary check to make sure what we did is correct. We're 99.99% convinced it's correct, but you never know. There always could be something that could be, give you a surprise, but we think we'll confirm it. But then what we're going to do is look for uh, a magnetic field using this technique. I didn't mention the name of the technique. It's called Zeeman splitting because what happens is this little feature that we see splits into two features because of the presence of the magnetic field. And we're going to look for Zeeman splitting in a much more distant galaxy than the one we looked at. The one we looked at had a the look back time is 6.5 billion years. We're looking at it as it was 6.5 billion years ago. The one we're going to look at in December, we're looking at it as it was 10 billion years ago. So if we see a strong magnetic field in that object, I would say all bets are off for the dynamo theory. It's very difficult for the dynamo to uh, boost a magnetic field that rapidly okay, in such a short time. This sounds like fascinating research. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Wolf. Well, thanks very much for having me. I'm Lisa Joy Zagorski with the National Science Foundation. Thanks for joining us.